In this video, I'm going to tell you about 10 terrific texts to use in your vocal warm-ups. Articulation is a fundamental part of warming up your voice as an actor. Every muscle in your mouth, your jaw, and your face form your speech muscles, and you need to thoroughly wake these up to speak with energy and clarity. These texts will be perfect for teachers wanting to lead a warm-up with students, or if you're working solo, simply speak through these texts out loud. I normally utilize tongue twisters in warm-ups, but I discovered this quote from legendary voice teacher Cicely Berry in her brilliant book, Your Voice and How to Use It, which made me totally change my mind. I know a lot of people use patter exercises like Gilbert and Sullivan verses or a tongue twister. I personally do not think they have much value. You learn to do them, but because they mean nothing to your intelligence or feeling, they do not relate to your ordinary speech. And in any case, they have no weight. And if it's good enough for sis, it's more than good enough for me. So let's get going with some impeccable pieces of text that will help get your voice warmed up in no time. Not the Furniture Game by Simon Armitage. This poem begins like this. His hair was a crow fished out of a blocked chimney, and his eyes were boiled eggs with the tops hammered in, and his blink was a cat flap, and his teeth were blue stones or Easter Island statues, and his bite was a perfect horseshoe. This poem is a mountain of metaphors describing one man, and the text simmers with a muscular storminess. The lack of punctuation allows you to see how many thoughts you can speak on a single breath. Keep adding thought by thought to extend your breath capacity and see how many you can speak before refueling. This poem can be found in this book, Kid, which is a book of poetry by Simon Armitage. It's also in this book, Paper Aeroplane, which is a selection of his poems from 1989 to 2014. Ouija by Sylvia Plath. It is a chilly god, a god of shades, rises to the glass from his black fathoms. At the window, those unborn, those undone, assemble with the frail paleness of moths, an envious phosphorescence in their wings. To begin with, isn't phosphorescence just one of the best words that you've ever spoken? I think Sylvia Plath's poems are stunning, and so many of them make perfect articulation or warm-up texts. This poem is fairly short, and it's filled with some lovely abstract words to bolster your vocabulary. Ouija is in her collected poems. This is one of the best books I own. Lesbos by Sylvia Plath. Viciousness in the kitchen, the potatoes hiss. It is all Hollywood, windowless, the fluorescent light wincing on and off like a terrible migraine. Coy paper strips for doors, stage curtains, a widow's frizz. And I, love, am a pathological liar. What a scorching opener to a poem. You can probably already tell how this text is brimming with aggression, rage and frustration. The title refers to the Greek island of Lesbos and the text is an absolute treat to speak. Release the words fully and it will feel like the best vocal vent you've ever had. This is a longer poem, so I suggest using just the first half. Or if you're working with a group, you could share out all the stanzas to be more efficient. This poem is also in this book, Sylvia Plath's collected poems, as well as in this book, which is Sylvia Plath's selected poems. Spad by Luke Wright. At a flash bacchanal, cash fans yak. Blaggards, brash gas Arabs, scant clad wags, and naff Granada drama stars as banal as pyjamas, all blah blah blah, class A fast, and stab at warm prawn snacks. Luke Wright calls this a univocal lipogram in A. Univocal means having a single meaning, and lipogram means a piece that uses specific words to avoid certain letters of the alphabet. In other words, it's a poem full of A sounds. Luke Wright is a modern wordsmith who loves writing bustling, rhyming ballads and specialises in performance poetry. His poems are exciting and boisterous, hilarious and deeply poignant. This poem is published in this book, the Toll, which also has four other univocal lipograms in it. The Pretender for the letter E, IDS for the letter I, Ron's Knockoff Shop for the letter O, and Burt Up Pub for the letter U. These are extreme tests of articulation. They're anarchic and elastic undertakings for your mouth. Ghost Crabs by Ted Hughes. 
At nightfall, as the sea darkens, a depth darkness thickens, mustering from the gulfs and the submarine badlands to the sea's edge. To begin with, it looks like rocks uncovering, mangling their pallor. Gradually, the labouring of the tide falls back from its productions, its power slips back from glistening nacelles, and they are crabs. This creepy poem is about a cast of crabs coming ashore. It's a supernatural and ominous horror story. I think Ted Hughes's poems are astounding. They're ideal for invigorating and energizing your palate. This poem is in Ted Hughes's new selected poems, as well as this collected poems. Both these books are full of delectable pieces to speak through. The Wind Hover by Gerard Manley Hopkins. I caught this morning morning's minion kingdom of daylight's dauphin, dappled dawn drawn falcon in his riding of the rolling level underneath him, steady air and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy. Gerard Manley Hopkins compounds words like no one else. Speaking through one of his poems feels like an Iron Man triathlon of text. This poem is about looking at a kestrel and being enraptured by its beauty and power. Hopkins writes the most intricately chewy poems possible. They're a joy to speak and use as an exhaustive warm-up. This poem is old enough to be out of copyright, so you can find it online for free. I've put a link in the description below. Or if you want a cracking collection of his work, check out this poems and prose book or this selected poetry book. How Shall My Animal by Dylan Thomas. How shall my animal, whose wizard shape I trace in the cavernous skull, vessel of abscesses and exultations, shall endure burial under the spelling wall, the invoked shrouding veil at the cap of the face, who should be furious, drunk as a vineyard snail, flailed like an octopus. This poem is pounding with wicked imagery. It's all about an inner monster or devilish demon that wants to get out. Dylan Thomas's work is so lyrical and arresting. It's glorious to speak out loud. This poem is in his selected poems, as well as this omnibus collection of works. Dart, the Woolen Mills Worker section by Alice Oswald. Tufting, felting, hanks, tops, spindles, slubbings, hoppers and rollers and slatted belts, bales of carded wool the colour of limestone, and wool puffs flying through tubes distributed by cyclones. This masterpiece is a huge poetic montage about people that live and work on the River Dart in Devon. This section is spoken by a woolen mills worker. It feels determined and detailed as they share the rigorous process of their work. The text captures the muscularity, the effort and tireless slog of their traditional craft. The poem is 48 pages long and this section starts on page 18 at And I, Keeper of the Woolen Mills. It's published in its own book called Dart. The Death of King Arthur by Simon Armitage. Then Sir Lucius dispatched lordly letters to the Orient, carried there by courageous couriers, to Ambergany and Orkage and Alexandria also, to India and Armenia by the flowing Euphrates, to Asia and Africa and all of Europe. This is a contemporary translation of a 400-year-old alliterative poem. The piece is jam-packed with powerful alliteration and it's an extremely satisfying and energising text to speak aloud. This section has the villain, Lucius of Rome, sending out letters. You go round the globe with a world of sounds in your mouth. There are many outstanding sections in this poem and they're all nicely divided into manageable stanzas. The full poem is published in this book, The Death of King Arthur. I Sing the Body Electric by Walt Whitman. Man's, woman's, child's, youth's, wife's, husband's, mother's, father's, young man's, young woman's poems. Head, neck, hair, ears, drop and tympan of the ears, eyes, eye fringes, iris of the eye, eyebrows, and the waking or sleeping of the lids, mouth, tongue, lips, teeth, roof of the mouth, jaws, and the jaw hinges. This poem is part sermon, 
part rhapsody, part profound adoration of the human body. This is section nine, the last 40 lines and the poem's finale. This text is like a thunderstorm that fizzes and flashes and is totally life-affirming. Walt Whitman delivers the mother of all lists to express his total awe at human biology and its infinite incredibleness. It's exhilarating to speak through and articulates the impossible brilliance of body, soul and voice. How apt. Walt Whitman's work is out of copyright, so you can find it online for free, linked below. And if you want all of his poems in one place, they're published in this book, The Complete Poems. With these texts, mouth them, whisper them, speak them, project them and release them. Aim for accuracy and fluency. Hit every word, keep breathing and use your breath to power the sound. Don't push from your throat. Once you've spoken through the text, explore speaking just the consonants in every word, then just the vowels in every word, then speak the full text slowly and then quickly. There's no better way of warming up your voice than by speaking these sensational texts. You're activating every sound through speaking complex images, thoughts and emotions, and these texts have everything you need. Plus, there are lots of ways of finding these books either for free or very cheaply. Visit your local library. They'll have various poetry books and will definitely have at least one of these books. If you're in education, check out your school or college library. Ask the librarian and I guarantee they'll have poetry books with these poems. In. Look at poetry anthologies too. These are collections of poems from different poets. Anthologies will often have these poems in or other great poems that you can use. Go to charity shops and secondhand bookshops. You can often pick up poetry books for a couple of quid. Get any of these books on eBay. Again, they'll often be really cheap, only a couple of pound rather than 10 to 15 pound new. Failing these money saving methods, you can order all of these books in person from local bookshops, from online bookshops, or from Amazon. And that's it for this video. Thanks ever so much for watching to the end. Feel free to comment down below with your favorite articulation warm-up texts and help spread the word about them. Give this video a like if it's helped you, subscribe if you haven't done, and ding the bell if you're an eager beaver. And finally, check out these other videos that I've made that I think you'll like. Take care and all the best.